All right, let's go. Imagine 400 years ago, this spot is where the Dutch came and discovered Taiwan. There's a lot of oyster beds here and I don't know if I can cut through it or I have to go around it. it looks really tricky. This is just like in Budai. We're back in Kaohsiung, in lovely Qijing, where I've been many times before. It's one of my favorite harbors. We haven't been out the past few months because the waves are big and the wind is big on the Taiwan Strait in the winter months. But look it, today it's fantastic and we're about to take a journey. Wait a minute, let me put it in neutral for a sec. Ugh. We're about to take a journey now. And the decision has always been, should we carry on going south or should we turn around and head back north and look at some of the beautiful fishing ports up north? I rolled the dice and we made the decision we're heading up north. Our first stop is going to be, one sec. Our first stop is going to be Anping Harbor. Like Kaohsiung Harbor, it's very, very historical. We're going to talk about some of the history of this beautiful harbor and we're also going to go talk about milkfish. Milkfish are a huge issue in Taiwan. People love eating them. How do they come? Where do they come from? How are they raised? We're gonna explore that later on today. So come along with me as we now head north. We're gonna head out of number one exit, Kaohsiung Harbor and steam north. We got a lot of great stories to cover as we head north, maybe even to Maju Jingmen later on this year. It's gonna be amazing. Come along with me. Let me push off and let's get going. All right, let's go. Anping Zanali. Tainan, Doi, this is Anping. This is Sangkang, this is Yikang. I've just set the autopilot here and I haven't engaged it because we're inside Kaohsiung Harbor. But it's going to be 24 nautical miles, you can see that here. Uh, and it's a travel time of about two hours. I think it'll be less than that as we speed up the boat. So that's based on 10 knots. We'll be doing around 13, 14 knots as we get up there. The weather will be smooth. So uh, let's see how the trip goes. You can see the Taiwanese Navy here. That's quite unusual. You can see all the people on board. That's to let the local people take a look at the ships they have. And I drove as close as I could to uh, really give you uh, an idea of these beautiful looking boats. So for those of you who are really paying attention, you'll notice that I wasn't departing today from Donggang. And the reason is in the winter time, it's not good to let the boat sit too long. So a few weeks ago, I started the engines and ran it a bit and drove it from Donggang here to Kaohsiung, which is only about an hour or less than an hour, just to give the engine a chance to move again, the boat to move again, stop the barnacles from growing. So that's why today I'm starting from uh, Kaohsiung Harbor, not from Donggang.
So we're on our way from Kaohsiung up to Anping. So we left here and we're heading up here to Anping Harbor. But we're here in Kezailiao or Oyster House Harbor. It's a tiny little fishing harbor that's well known for uh, mullet fishing. We missed the mullet fishing this year. We'll be back to show you that. But I do want to show you this harbor because it's very, very cute. This is a class two harbor. It's a small harbor. It has a very active uh, fishing market. So you can come here and buy your fish. Let's go in and take a look. It's really cute. Look at this cute little harbor. Uh, it has everything. It's got a large fishermen's association, as most harbors do. It has a beautiful temple, and it also has a fish market. So if you want a real traditional harbor to come look at, this is the one to come to. And I understand from talking to the Coast Guard, this harbor's name comes from the fact that 50 years ago, there wasn't a harbor here. It was all just oyster beds. So obviously the oyster beds are gone now, and they've created this harbor for fishing purposes, but that's where its name comes from. That means you never know what you're gonna find, and that's what I've discovered here. Have you noticed all the boats here are docked in a way that they're lined up this way. I've never seen that before. Usually they park alongside the dock. Here they're all lined up as if they've just driven in. And I asked an old captain why. He says he doesn't know why. That's just a custom here. And that's the neat thing. Every harbor has its own little peculiarities. And that's why I love coming and exploring these fishing harbors. And I hope you find this interesting too. So I'm pumping the fuel out of here into the main tank over there so we can make the final run. We always gotta take the fuel out of the storage tanks on either side and put it into the main tank in the front because that's where the engine draws the fuel from. Everything's done, let's go. Imagine 400 years ago, this spot is where the Dutch came and discovered Taiwan. Even the name itself, Taiwan, comes from Da'an, which is the name the native people here had for this place 400 years ago. The Dutch were kicked out of Penghu and they made their way across the Taiwan Strait to this spot, Anping, and that's why it's so historical. You will see the markers of the commercial harbor here, and a few kilometers past that is the fishing harbor where we were gonna go into. And we're gonna explore the historic sites of Anping and try to understand what life was like here 400 years ago. As we start to uncover some of the history here, you'll see what life was like and you'll see that Taiwan's history really began in Anping 400 years ago in 1624 when the Dutch arrived here. oyster beds here and I don't know if I can cut through it or I have to go around it. Looks really tricky. This is just like in Budai. So it's getting dark but I still have some daylight. I'm gonna see if I can sneak in between these oyster beds but uh, it's definitely gonna be a little bit tricky because even the GPS tells me to go all the way around which I don't want to do because it's getting late. The harbor is over there somewhere so I gotta get through here made it. See how close we are? Yeah. Very close. <laughs> Dangerous and tricky. <clears throat> so let's just get through this maze without any incident and then we'll be okay. So far so good. We're out. We're into the main stretch here. So we're out of the maze. We've made it and now we're heading into the harbor. You're getting a first hand tour of the Amping Harbor sunset. This is a view you can only see from the boat and it's amazing. We just stopped here in the middle of the oyster beds and we're just waiting for the sun to go down and it's really, really fabulous. So 
So we're now in the oldest part of the fishing harbor of Anping. And this is a very traditional area. I think a lot of people don't know that. This is actually the most ancient part, isn't it? Yes, because this is the Anping Park. 最旧的应该是在往更深处的地方。对，因为那个安平古堡都在这边。对，我也搞不清楚，因为以前那个安平古堡都在这边，那那个岛已经已经找不到，我找了好几次都找不到了。现在完全不一样，是吧？完全不一样，它已经都是淤积了。过去的安平渔港是因为这边有十一个岛屿，我们叫做它有叫昆森，昆森。哎，然后它就是鱼的意思。嗯，那时候我们叫做台江内海，这个台江内海是从安南区到安平区这边，几乎都有涵盖非常大。啊，只是它后来淤积了。我觉得安平港真的很特别，因为非常的大。嗯，一看都是小小不那么多的小区，变成一共是很大的一个港。嗯，安平港分只有两个区块，一个是安平渔港，一个是安平商港。香港的部分是由航港局，那是高雄这边在管理的。Oh, okay. 那渔港部分还是台南市政府这边在管理。Oh, okay, okay. 对对。这里的渔船是钓怎么样的鱼？呃，在秋冬的时候，我们这边其实大部分都是土托，或者是白鲳。好，因为我们外海在秋冬的时候，我们的那个。呃，海海象是比较平稳的，所以很多的鱼都会聚集在那边。然后在这边，台南市其实是沿海地区凤螺最大的一个产地，所以很多渔船都会跑来台南这边呃抓凤螺。然后还有螃蟹啊，一般的蟹类都是在季节的时候会出来。So we're now in the oldest part of Anping Harbor, and right behind me you can see Fort Zelandia, which is that tower over there, the white tower with the brown roof. And you can also see, barely though, behind that big tree is the old customs house. So when boats used to come into uh, Anping Harbor 400 years ago, they'd have to report here and uh, declare what kind of goods they are. So this is really where the history of Tainan began, and actually the history of Taiwan 400 years ago. It's really interesting. So we're right on the channel that connects the fishing harbor over there with the commercial harbor here. And what do you find in the middle? Of course, the yacht harbor. Look at these beautiful boats. Anping is known for its yachting culture, and this is one of the busiest yacht harbors in all of Taiwan. And you can see there's a lot of money parked here. We're just entering the Anping commercial harbor through the little channel, and you can see they don't really like fishing boats in here, so we're not going to stay too long. But you can see it's quite an active harbor. And over here you have the trunks of the wind farms. And there's some transportation ships and also some cargo ships. So it is an interesting harbor to look at as well. We're now in probably what is the oldest part of the harbor. And you can see that the tower, where is it? Oh, hey, can't I come without? That way, the house is covered. Oh, wait a second. Oh, it's cold. It's cold, isn't it? Put your jacket on. Okay, no problem. The wind is cold, but beautiful, huh? 